I remember getting a Wii for Christmas in 2006. They were in super high demand, so it was a pretty big deal. Me and my friends all played Wii Sports for hours. It was simple fun for months on end. Then a couple years later, I borrowed Wii Sports Resort from a friend in marching band. It was supposed to be for a few days, but I kept it for months. Fuck that guy. No, I'm just kidding, he's alright. But it was so magical. I loved flying the plane around the island, playing the sword showdown mode. This could be its own game. Playing frisbee on the beach with the doggy, something that we uh, struggle with today. Then there was Wii Sports Club. I played the demo for an afternoon, then deleted it. Nobody cares about that one. Anyways, I never expected the Wii Sports series to come back. So imagine my surprise when in 2022, Nintendo was like, Hey, remember Wii Sports? Well, here's a worse version of it. Part 1. It's all about the sports. Wii Sports, five sports that all felt different from each other. Wii Sports Resort, 12 events that again were all very different. There were two copied over from Wii Sports, three if you count table tennis, but they were all enhanced by Wii Motion Plus. Plus, there were side games within each mode. Wii Sports had these fun little fitness mini games. Each of Resort's games had multiple modes. For example, Swordplay had 1v1 duels, Speed Slice, and Showdown. Fast forward 13 years from Resort, and at launch in April of 2022, Nintendo's Switch Sports had six sports. Eight months after launch, there was an update that added golf, a mode that was already in all three previous games, as if the Switch isn't already double cheeked up with golf games, as if Nintendo didn't already release a half-finished golf game in 2021, and then in Nintendo Directs, they were like, oh, whoops, we need more time for golf, even though it's the same courses as Wii Sports Golf, so maybe this winter? As if golf is so technically complicated that it needed extra time to implement fucking golf. There were allegedly data minds of files for basketball and dodgeball, but at time of recording, about a year after launch, there are seven sports. Four of them are repeats from previous games, which is fine, I guess, but of the hundreds of sports to choose from, nearly half of them are hit ball over net games. Huh? Quick sidebar though, sequel scope. Does the size and content of a game necessarily need to match or exceed that of the previous games? No, I don't think so, but it should not feel like an enormous downgrade either, especially when the first game was free with a game console? Remember all the fun side modes in the previous sports games? Well, they're gone, replaced by nothing. And look, I think you should judge a game by what it is, not by what it is not. But what it is, is what they said in the trailer, which is the next step in the Wii Sports series. It's a new iteration of the Wii Sports series. Nintendo Switch Sports. Nintendo Switch Sports. It's a sequel to the Wii Sports series that you can play with family and friends. And this feels like a huge step backwards. But why am I focusing so much on the side modes? Because that's where the video game can be a video game. Not just a simulation that's worse than real life. Switch Sports Bowling is great because it has tricky bowling. Can't do that at a real bowling alley. Not legally at least. But the other modes don't have this. I can beat someone over the head with a stick at home. We can't even sync our schedules for a 5 person D&D &D game. Let alone lining up 50 people on pick them all out Kill Bill Crazy 88 style, you know? So instead of having fun game modes, Nintendo places all their chips into online play. You know, Nintendo's strong suit, online gaming. Here's what I think of each sport in order from best to worst, plus some pro tips to break up my bitching and moaning over the quality of this casual game for babies. Bowling. Bowling is the best one, and the one I've played the most. Everyone bowling at the same time is great. Every bowling game should have this. The only online mode is survival bowling, where you start with 16 players and every three frames, the bottom half of the players lose. That's right, it's a bowling battle royale. When you reach high enough level, the game sometimes puts you into tricky bowling, which makes it way more interesting. Because in regular bowling, you bowl a perfect game until you accidentally bowl a 7-10 split and then you lose. Sometimes I want to do regular bowling, but sometimes I want to do tricky bowling, but when playing online, you don't get to decide, the game always picks for you. Also, in each frame of tricky bowling, not everyone is bowling on the same setup? You can see it in the replays. How is it fair for some people to be on a beginner bowling lane and others on the advanced version? And you spectate by default when you get knocked out. I can guarantee you that 99% of players are not spectating random ass people after they lose. There's a lot of wait time while playing because some of y'all take your sweet ass time just to roll the gutter ball, so I'll usually watch YouTube videos while playing this game to keep myself entertained. Which is not a good thing? 
pro tip. In every set of three frames, the middle one is always the most important one. If you want a bowl of strike every time, whip it out right down the middle as hard and as straight as you can. At least, you used to be able to do that, but one of the only patches this game received removed that, so... Uh... Soccer! Soccer, or as the rest of the world calls it, religion. Soccer is also pretty alright. You know Rocket League, the soccer and cards video game? This is Rocket League for babies. Obviously, Rocket League is soccer, but this is more Rocket League than it is actual soccer. In Switch Sports Soccer, players cluster up and run straight at the ball the whole round without thinking. See what I mean? It's basically Rocket League. This sport is fine, except the ball doesn't go where you want it to go, since kicking is done by swinging your arms, just like in real life. I'll be set up for a goal and swing it perfectly horizontally and it goes above the net all the time. Scoring one goal is the same as scoring two goals because if the score is two to zero there will be a golden ball worth two goals. I'm sure that's a playtesting thing since the matches are pretty short and the losing team won't give up if they're down by two but instead you're more incentivized to score one goal than just run down the clock. There's a sprint function with limited stamina which maybe should have been the default running speed and the camera is kind of ass and fights you when you try to change it like you're putting the dog in the tub for a bath. So yeah, it's basically Rocket League. Pro tip, play like it's actual soccer. Don't run straight at the ball for three minutes. Spread out, pass to your teammates, play defense, maybe dribble a little bit before kicking it. It also helps me to change my minimap settings so the map doesn't rotate. I do not know why that was not the default. Tennis. Do we really not have another sound effect? Oh my god. Tennis is fine. It's basically Wii Tennis, but with a few other courts and a few more shot types. So I don't feel like I have as much control over the ball's angle as I did in the original Wii Sports Tennis. But overall, it's simple, but I... Pro tip, you have to swing slightly earlier than you think you do for the power serve, since Joy-Cons have a few frames of delay. More on that later. This concludes the good sports. Volleyball. Volleyball is okay. You bump, set, and spike, and then the other team bumps, sets, and spikes, and you repeat that until one team messes up the rhythm. That's how all of these games are. It's kind of hard to explain, but in Switch Sports, you don't win by playing better or outsmarting the other team. You win by the opponent making a mistake, oftentimes on accident. I just wish there was more player agency, especially in volleyball, where the camera doesn't even follow the ball very well. You can sort of move around when it's your turn to bump, but in my experience, it doesn't affect your performance all that much unless you intentionally go the wrong way. All I'm saying is, I have played better virtual volleyball in Super Spike V-Ball, a game on the NES that is 30 years old. Pro tip, you can do an early spike to change up the timing a little. Badminton. It's tense but worse. Pro tip, don't play it. I have no idea why this bougie ass sport is in the game at all, especially in a game where there is already tennis. This is the mode with probably the least amount of conveyance, making it hard to tell if you're actually playing the game correctly or not. There's a stamina meter you cannot see or you fall on your face and lose. Given its smaller court size, this would have made sense to be the tennis game where you can directly move your character yourself, but no, it's just worse tennis. Golf. Remember how golf was delayed? Yeah, they should have spent more time on golf because this mode is damn near unplayable. It's another battle royale mode, like bowling. If you're losing early, you don't waste your time by staying for the full thing, which is good. The downside is that if you finish your hole early, you spend a lot of time waiting for other people to finish. This could be said about every mode, but I recommend having a YouTube video on in the background while playing and waiting. I can recommend a pretty good one on trains and video games. The problem is the motion to Protection. Maybe I'm just a fucking idiot. Well, I am a fucking idiot. But I can hop back into Wii Golf and do just fine. But in Switch Sports Golf, the Joy-Cons are so inconsistent. Long range driving works mostly okay after a couple practice swings, but the putting on the green is impossible. The putter is more sensitive than a Sonic the Hedgehog fan if you say the werewolf game was kinda mid. What the fuck? Man, fuck this game. This stupid ass game. There are no settings to adjust the sensitivity. Man, look at this shit. I'm barely moving and it's either a complete dead fish or hog wild boss of the wall launched the bomb to the fucking heliosphere. So I went in to get more footage, and this time, putting actually worked mostly okay. Keep in mind, this is one time out of like 10 where the game functioned properly. And I used the same controller and everything, so instead of being boring and unplayable, it was just boring. Pro tip, uh, don't hit the ball into the water. 
Chambara. Chambara is worse than the mode that barely works because Chambara actively pisses me off. It was the one I was looking forward to the most, but the more I played it, the worse it got. Maybe it was my fault because I mostly used the twin swords because dual wielding is awesome, if not impractical. But the spin attack doesn't work like two thirds of the time. I'll swing both Joy-Cons in unison, but it doesn't register and my character just dumbly flails around instead of doing an actual attack and then I'll lose. I did switch to the regular sword and had a little bit better of a time, but not a fun time. The central conceit of Chumbara is that if they're swinging horizontally, guard vertically and vice versa, right? But the hit detection is all over the place. Plus sometimes there's lag, plus there's input delay inherent in the Joy-Cons, plus there's sometimes where the game says you swung a different way than where you thought you did. At higher levels, wins and losses just feels like straight up luck. I don't know, any game where I... <laughs> We all know it's, it's, it's pretty amazing in video games. Who's just the fucking Koromora twice? Pro tip, do this for ultimate defense. In each match, you can tell when the other player is having trouble with the motion controls just like I was. Which brings me to part two. The controls. I think the Nintendo Switch Pro Controller is one of the greatest controllers of all time. And the Nintendo Switch Joy-Cons are some of the worst, most piece of shit, stupid ass controllers. I only use Joy-Cons when I'm forced to. Pokemon Let's Go, Mario Odyssey sometimes, Mario Kart while running on the treadmill I split the Joy-Cons. That's it. My magnum sized mega fingers are simply too big to comfortably use these mini M&M sized buttons. And I can't believe I'm bringing up motion control discourse in the year of our lord 2023, but here we go. Motion controls absolutely can work in certain cases, especially simple actions like throwing Mario's hat in Odyssey. I've always struggled with twin stick aiming in shooters, but gyro aiming in games like Splatoon feels so natural. But the weakness of motion controls isn't the motion itself, but from the feedback. That being inconsistent feedback and lack of tactile feedback. For example, I press the button, Mario jumps. I feel my finger pressing the button, I see Mario jumping on screen. I press the button longer, Mario jumps higher. It's simple. This is good feedback. But when I'm swinging the sword or bowling the ball, I feel like I'm doing the same thing, and the character mostly does too, but sometimes it's just not exactly what I wanted. And that's the flaw of motion controls. It's the imprecision. There's too large of a window of variation in human movements. My brain tells my body to do the same thing, but the acceleration and the gyrometer in the controller are giving me different results. If I'm doing the same action 1000 times and it does what I want it to do 90% of the time, that's still 100 times I'm getting pissed off. The ideal number is zero. Not to mention the accessibility issues it raises. What if someone with limited mobility wants to play this game with their friends? They can't. When it comes to accessibility in gaming, a rising tide lifts all boats, and Nintendo's habitual willful ignorance of accessibility options is draining the ocean. Part 3. The Aesthetic Woohoo Island feels like summer vacation. Spoko Square feels like gentrification. You can either play as a me or a sports mate. As someone with taste, y'all know which one I picked. It's those soulless eyes. Those are the eyes of a remorseless cannibal. Fucking corporate presentation clip art looking ass. Fucking teenage ninjala characters. You know a killer when I see one. You start the game with limited customization options, but each week you have access to unlock more options. And most of them are features for your sports mate's face. But you can just go into the meat editor and make a character with more options that better resembles you. Even as you unlock more stuff, you still can't make your sports mate look like you. They will always look like a digital avatar, like it's fucking Maple Story. In a game like Splatoon, I'm making a custom cephalopod character in the Splatoon world. But in this casual sports game, I'd prefer the option to make a character who more closely resembles me, especially when the art design of the previous games portrayed that. This game just lacks personality. It feels like a corporate mandated minimum viable product, not something crafted with any sort of passion or vision. Oh, and I have not been playing it in this video, but the music is atrociously bad. I'm not expecting Switch Sports soundtrack to have fucking London Symphony Orchestra, although I don't think anyone would complain about that either, but this garbage sounds like elevator music being played by a bleeding out jazz jazz 
giraffe who just got flattened by an 18 wheeler. Music is subjective. I'm sure there's someone out there who goes to the club, walks up to the DJ and requests this grocery store sound and Ed Sheeran instrumental type beat. But you can't mute the music and just hear the sound effects, a feature that every modern game should have, so I mute the entire game instead. Part 4, The Content, and Nintendo's Problem with Full Price Early Access Nintendo Switch Sports' core tenets that distinguish it from the previous sports games are online play, which and customization options. Play the game, unlock stuff in the game. This is a very normal gameplay loop that's been around for decades and does not need to be fucked with. Monster Hunter. I play the game, I get to choose which weapons and armor to make. Splatoon. I play the game, I get to pick which things to buy in the shop. I, I already have everything in this game, we'll just have to pretend. Animal Crossing. I do the chores, I buy things in the store. Switch Sports. I play the game, get to 100 points, then a reward on the pass and rotation is randomly determined for me. I do not get to pick which one. What do you unlock? Titles, which is just words. Emotes, which you can only equip for. Face options for your sports mate, which I'm not playing as because they are ugly. And a handful of actual options I can use, many of which are pretty cool. If you want to unlock a different outfit, which is the thing most players will want the most, not a new fucking eyebrow or whatever, you have to do 12 steps like a recovering alcoholic to unlock everything else on that week's pass, and then you get the outfit as the last thing. And it takes a couple of hours to get everything else on each pass. Each week, a new pass of stuff is introduced, but the passes are limited time, so if you don't get everything in three weeks, it's gone. It wasn't until 12 months after this game released, an update came out that sort of lets you get the older stuff you missed. This should have been in the game on day one, not day 365. New stuff each week should be cool, but taking away the old stuff is extremely scummy. It's Wednesday night, time for bed. Nope, hang on, first I got a bowl for three hours to knock the fucking squirrel soup before it goes out of rotation forever. In other games with shops, I don't need to grind and buy 12 things I don't want to get the one thing I do want. I can save money today and spend it later. Can't do that in Switch Sports. Can't order cool things I see other players wearing like you can in Splatoon. Switch Sports can't do anything like that, it's just a drag. Oh and also, the only way to unlock the stuff is via the global online mode. Play offline? Nothing. Play online with friends only? Nothing. And there's no option to play online both with friends and globally. It's either all randos where you do get stuff or just your friends plus bots where you get nothing. If I'm playing the game, I should be unlocking stuff in the game. Oh and also, let's say you plan on having some friends over for some beers and bowling. So you play the online mode by yourself for months to unlock stuff so they can customize their character when they come over. Turns out, they can't. You unlock stuff, but only for your character profile to wear it. No guest accounts or anyone else on the console can. Customization is a key feature. It would be like if in Smash Brothers or Mario Kart, only one person could use the new characters, and everyone else has to play a shy guy. It was at this point where I stopped playing Switch Sports entirely because I was simply fed up. They make a casual game with only a little bit of content at launch that prioritizes online play. But they make all these intentionally dumbass decisions to trick and coerce players with FOMO to fill the lobbies with players and have online play at all. So why not shift the focus of this casual game to both online and offline play? Because this game only exists to sell more Nintendo Switch Online memberships! Part 5 Free updates? You mean the rest of the game I already paid for? When I buy the game, there should be enough game there for me to enjoy the game. Not be like, alright well here's some of the game now and we'll maybe give you the rest of the stuff over the next year or two. There's a big difference between this already cool game is getting updated with more stuff and updates is all this game has. Maybe it'll eventually be good, eventually feel like a good game after all the updates, but pay us now anyways. In other games, there's depth of gameplay to improve and master between updates. New stuff comes out, I'm not even done with the current stuff. This is cool, but with more casual games, it ain't like that. And it's one thing if it's like a free to play game, like Fall Guys, or if it's like a special holiday event. If this was a real game, maybe you could walk around Spoko Square, accept challenges from NPCs to unlock their outfits. But instead, Nintendo Switch Sports is a fake ass game, so it has this half assed battle pass where every week is treated like a special event when it's 
it's not. Nintendo has a really bad habit of flying too close to the sun and turning fun small ideas into kinda doo-doo ones. Motion controls, cool at first, a fun novelty, then, well... Amiibo, cool at first, but then quickly oversaturated with crap like Amiibo Festival and Chibi Robo Ziplash. This free update, aka Finish It Later model, is not at all unique to Nintendo, but with Nintendo, it all started with Splatoon 1. It launched earlier than planned, but since it was a brand new IP, everything was new, nothing to compare it to, and the frequent updates were exciting, it was praised for their frequent drops. Then they did it again with ARMS, but no one batted an eye because who gives a shit about ARMS? And they did it again with Splatoon 2, but it had so many new things, plus it was most people's first Splatoon game, so they didn't notice as much. But remember Kirby Star Allies, where the rest of the game didn't come out until like almost a year later? Remember Mario Tennis Aces, where they released one new character a month, and that's when people really started to notice? Remember Animal Crossing New Horizons, which did have new stuff like terraforming to keep people busy, but still probably way better than foreseen, and came out at a time where most people couldn't do anything else, so we all sped through the launch content. But its only major update was almost two years later after most people stopped playing. Remember when Mario 3D All-Stars and Fire Emblem Shadow Dragon they were arbitrarily removed from the digital eShop to create false scarcity. They localized an entire game just to have it available for four months and pretended Mario Galaxy 2 didn't exist even though all they were doing was dumping ROMs into an emulator, dumping that into a cartridge and selling it for almost full price. Remember Mario 35? No you don't. What are you talking about? It never existed. Remember Mario Golf? Super rushed product? Remember how Mario Strikers Battle League, a fan favorite series revived after 15 years, launched with no modes, no characters, no daisy. I didn't get it. I was fed up. Call me an old timer, but I remember back in the day when you had to play the game to unlock stuff in the game, not wait for an eventual update or pay extra money for the DLC. It's a shame because a lot of these games are quality games with great gameplay mechanics and presentation, but all that gets muddled up when large chunks of the game is piecemealed out to you after you may have already paid full price for it. But we keep buying them because we're fucking idiots. Or at least I am. Even recently, remember how Pokemon Scarlet and Violet can't even walk and chew bubblegum at the same time, but it's still one of the fastest selling games ever? And they're even charging almost the cost of the game for the DLC for this game that doesn't even run properly? Remember how Splatoon 3 has a limited time catalog now, and you can only get stuff you may have missed way later at a random chance from fucking gotcha balls? Man, isn't this stuff supposed to be art? And the sad thing is, it's partially his fault. Me? Part 6. Games are not just games. Back in the day, the game came out, that was the game. Nowadays, every game that gets released is not just a game, it's an entry into an entire content production ecosystem, a sentence that makes them want to throw up. Gaming websites, streaming, podcasts, reviews, esports, cosplays, dumbass discussions on Twitter, dumbass YouTube videos like this one. The entire income of people who had nothing to do with the creation of the game is reliant on certain games being successful and remaining within the public conscience. Many games did not just sell well only because they are good, but also because people talked about them. Undertale, Five Nights, Amogus, how many games achieved their success largely due to online content about the game? Even Minecraft in the early days. Word of mouth is the most reliable way to get someone to buy something, and online content from someone who's built up rapport with their audience is basically word of mouth on a large scale. An increased number of passive touches and exposure is more likely to convert into sales, and this way you can convert consumers into free advertisers. If the initial wave of release sales isn't enough to get people talking about the game, then releasing DLC and FREE updates will get people talking about the game again, either via articles, online console news updates, online content about the game, to attempt to re-enter the game into the public discussion forum, translating into more sales. At least, it's supposed to. Even negative content like this video will probably lead to more sales, just by placing it back into gaming's cultural zeitgeist. Okay, I did throw up a little bit that time. It won't lead to negative negative sales, people have already bought it. The sad truth that's easy to forget is that game studios do not exist to make games. They exist to turn investor dollars into investor profit by any means necessary. If they thought there'd be a higher yield on selling dick pics and titty PNGs, that's exactly what they would do. Oh wait, they did do that and it's made them a billion dollars. 10, 20 years ago, the best way to make the most money on a game was to make a good game. 
Nowadays, it's to add in all this other stupid ass bullshit. Or at least, that's what investors and publishers think. This game should have been free! Or at least included with an NSO membership. Not $40 digital and 50 physical because you have to pay extra for the leg strap for one feature that took months to add to this game. Just this? Kicking? You needed extra months for this? I don't I don't even need the leg strap. I played Ring Fit for like 300 hours. I already got one. To be fair, this game is not terrible. You can go in and still have an okay time in some of the modes. Playing this game recently, I did have to wait quite a bit of time. However, lobbies did eventually fill up. And it's a shame because some of these games features should be really cool. You can play online, that's really cool. You can dress up your character, that's really cool. There's new stuff every week, that's really cool. But instead, it's that special kind of bad where this game was half finished and sent out to die. Plus they made intentional design decisions specifically catered to piss me off. But anyways, that's all I got. Let me know your opinions on Nintendo Switch Sports in the comments. And if you liked the video, don't forget to subscribe. And today's comment code word is hydration. Comment hydration if you made it all the way through the video. I'm going to take a shower after being around all these sports mates. And uh, that's it. Video's over.